In this presentation, we will take a look at the process of entering a job or project estimate. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. We're going to go down to the projects now and we're going to think about the estimating process. Now, obviously, the estimating process would happen before typically uh, we start the job, but we want to look at it uh, at this point so that we can compare it to the entering of the data. So I'm going to hold down control, going to scroll down just a little bit so we can see our jobs down here. Now we can only see 15 and 16 because I only have the in progress jobs. I'm going to open up this item. And I want to look at all jobs and I'd like to look at job number 14 because that's the one that's been completed so we can do the, the fullest comparison of, you know, the estimate entering process versus the invoice entering process. So I'm going to go into job number 14. So we can see the activity that happened through the process, right? We had the income, we've got the costs and we've got the profit. So we've obviously entered all this information into it already. Let's think about the uh, estimate process. And that would usually happen when we create a new job and we can kind of compare it to the process that we have going through now, including basically the invoicing process. So if I go to the drop down up top and I say, uh, add a project, and then we go down to the estimate. So we're gonna be estimating here. So we're gonna go to the estimate field. And we're going to be taking a look at the project for uh, project number 14. Now you'll note, of course, the estimate looks a whole lot like uh, the actual invoice. It's going to be a similar kind of process. We're going to be entering this information into the estimate. The main difference being this is happening before we've actually done anything. And therefore, it's going to be just an estimate, not something that we're going to be used uh, to be billing the client with. Now we also have the statuses down here, which is a little bit different than a standard invoice. So the, the default would be pending and then accepted. So if this was an estimate and then it was accepted, then we can track that the that this estimate has been accepted and the job is moving forward, then closed, having the estimate to be closed. And then if it was a rejected estimate, so we don't have to delete the estimate, we can keep it in the system as a rejected estimate. So then I'm gonna go through here, we'll keep it as pending. We've got the email, we've got the customer, it's gonna be customer one, even though we're talking about job or project number 14. We're gonna say this happened as of 010120, uh, cause that's gonna be the beginning of our, our period. I'm not gonna put the expiration here, estimate number, I'm gonna keep it as the default, which is populating automatically. Then we're gonna enter our information in a similar way as we would with the invoice. So it's gonna look uh, similar to the invoice. I'm gonna be entering basically the, um, line items so the first one was cement so i'm going to put the cement render and we're going to estimate this time that the cement render let's say is 7500 so we're doing our estimates obviously we would we would need a professional a professional estimator to help us to determine what we believe the costs will be if there's something like a bid or an estimate we're going to have the drop ceiling we're going to say that was 5300 we're going to then say that uh, we have a flooring and we're going to pick that one up and that's going to be, we're going to say that we believe that one's going to be uh, 1,200 and then we have, we're going to say uh, direct labor. So direct labor, we think that that's going to be, uh, let's say uh, 19,000. We think that the factory overhead, factory overhead, which we might use with a predetermined overhead rate is the way we might, you know, be fi figuring that. It's gonna be 8,500. And then we have the cement render, cement render. And I thought I already had cement render. And oh, we had it twice here. I'm gonna put it in here again. We got. Uh, 14,000 and tab, 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 and then wood finishing. So we're going to say wood finishing, and that's going to be for, we're going to say 7,000. And then I'm going to be picking up the wall covering, wall covering here, and that's going to be for 11,300. And then we've got the stucco so i'm going to tab through there stucco tab tab that's going to be the uh 14,600 and tab 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 and then we're going to have the paint and wood stain so paint and wood stain so we'll tab through that that's going to be for 
we'll say uh, 14,000. Tab, tab, tab. And then we have the marble. So we'll pick up the marble. And that's going to be for, we're saying 21,000. And tab, tab, tab. And then we got the flooring. Flooring. F L O O R. And that's it. So we're going to pick that up. And we're going to say that that's going to be 15,000. And tab, tab, tab. Then we have uh, more direct labor. Direct labor. And we're going to say that that is uh, 25,000. We're going to be picking up then indirect labor indirect labor and we're gonna say uh, 2,000 and then indirect indire indirect materials I'm gonna be picking up at uh, 6,000 and then we're gonna be saying that uh, we'll tap through here Tab, 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 indirect materials. And then we have utilities. Utilities. We're going to be picking up. That's going to be part of the overhead of the uh, 3,000. And note, the reason we have some of these things in here twice is because we had the beginning balance that we entered into the system. And I'm picking this up basically for the invoice. And then we had this stuff that act, act, happened during the period. So you might consolidate like the direct labor and the direct labor so you don't have it in there twice, of course. Uh, for the estimate but i'm basically picking this up from uh, the invoice uh, so that we can have a, a comparable item so then we have the rent so i'm going to pick up the rent which is a, a variant of the overhead once again and so the rent amount and notice i've been putting these into this should be one twenty one thousand i'm going to tab 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 one fifteen thousand tab 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 one uh, 25,000 was that tab 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 and then one 2,000 tab 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 and then one and 6,000 tab 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 and one and 3,000 all right and now we're on the rent which is <laughs> one and we're gonna say 4,000 and then we've got depreciation so depreciation and we're going to estimate that to be, we'll say, 1 and uh, 6,400. All right. And then we've got the markup. And then the markup, which is a 30% markup. So if this was going to be our cost, then the 277.9, if that's our estimated cost, then we would consider our markup pulling out the old trusty calculator. Is going to be the 2779 times the 0 0.30 or 30 percent you would think that would be then or that would be if that was the case the markup of the 83370 and so that puts us at the 361 270 so i'm not sure that's a little pretty far over what our actual was so <laughs> we don't, but in any case i'm going to keep that for now so that's going to basically be, you know, our estimate, the estimate uh, that we have put into place here. Now, when we think of the estimate, you can think of it a few different ways. Obviously, this could be something that could be an estimate for the for the job to see if we can then uh, get the job. And then there's questions as to whether how hard the estimate is. In other words, is this an estimate that we're going to we're going to stick to no matter what the actual cost is? Or are we going to actually go by the actual cost and then do the markup from that point in time? So you could you can uh, then create obviously your invoice based on and he, there's just a few other places where I kind of messed up here. This should be, uh, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna adjust it. We got the zero amounts over here, so just realize that if I, I messed that up, sorry about that. But in any case, just realize that you can then uh, say if it's a, if it's a hard estimate, then once you complete the job, then of course you can bill whatever the whatever your billing it rate is as you go, and you, your billing would be based on the estimate here rather than what we did, which was actually to use the actual billable items to pull over the invoice and then say, hey, look, we're, this is what we think it's going to be, 
and then we're going to do what we're, we're going to actually do, which will be uh, the, the actual cost and the 30% markup. So there's obviously plus and cons to to either method you're going to use. If you're if you're more um, if solid on the estimates, if your estimates are really good and you can make a solid estimate, and you're not going to have that deviation unless there's a a solid change in the contract, the agreement that's going to be made. The estimates can give a lot of assurance. That that kind of system can give a lot of assurance to the customers because obviously as a customer you're going to be worried that. Uh, the actual cost is going to be greater <laughs> than than the estimate, you know. So then the estimates aren't worth that much if you can't trust the estimate. So, but however, of course, if the estimate, if you're estimating something that's got a lot of variant in it, a lot of, you know, uh, preference in terms of the customer, then you're going to want to to say, hey, this is what we think it's going to be, but it could vary from that depending on what your personal preferences are and choices are and whatnot. And so we're going to base the contract based on what actually happens and then have a, have a 30% markup. So depends what you what it's going to work. But obviously, this could be something then that you would use to populate the invoice if that's what you if that's the system you were going to use. Or again, you could do it the way we did it, which is basically billing the information and then using that billable information to populate the invoice. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'm going to say uh, save and close. Now, if we want. Now, if we want to view the estimate, then we can go to the transactions. I'm going to go to the second tab here with the transactions and I'm going to sort the transactions or we could filter the transactions by basically the estimate. So I'm going to filter the transaction. We're going to go to the items here. Now, I'm going to just look for the open estimates. So I'd like to see the open estimates because I left it open there and then I'm going to say OK. And then there's our estimate, so we can then open up our, our estimate from here and take a look at that estimate. Uh, and so here's our actual estimate. Once again, if I close this back out, it's loading up a little slow, but that's okay. That's my fault. It's my computer. I'm going to close this back out. And then, of course, we can create an invoice. And if we were to create the invoice, we can populate the invoice basically from the estimate. Our options being then the remaining total of all lines, or, or we can say 50% of each line, or custom amount for each line so in other words if you're gonna be if you had a completed job here and now you want to bill for the entire job then you could say I want the remaining amount for all, all the lines if we haven't done any billing up to up to this point in time or we could take take some kind of percentage such as 50% of each line item if we're doing some kind of progress billing system or we can have some kind of custom amount that's going to be provided for each line so if we keep it at the top one, then I'm going to just say, I want the remaining amount. I'm going to build the entire thing. We're going to then create the invoice. And so it's going to uh, populate the invoice. And now we have an invoice that looks a whole lot like the estimate, right? We, we created the invoice from the estimate. You can see the link here. If, if you were to go to that, there's the estimate that it's going to be linked to. Now, if we go down, you can, it's indicated by its, uh, these little chains, these little links, meaning that it's linked <laughs> to uh the estimate and obviously it's populating this information on the invoice based on the estimate and we get down to our total down below so note we already did this we already invoiced the client and we did so through the billing process rather than pulling the information from the estimate so it just depends how how hard is the estimate is the estimate a hard estimate that you're going to use for sure then you can use the estimate to pull through to the invoice if it's a, if it's not a hard estimate and you'd rather actually uh, bill based on the actual cost in some way shape or a form then you can use that billing process as we did throughout the problem so those those are an option here i'm going to close this back out and do you want to do you want to leave without saving yes i'm not going to actually save that because i would that would be billing twice because we used the other method uh to do so obviously if, if you went and you unfiltered this i'm going to go back in and i'm going to see all transactions and apply all transactions you'll rem remember and recall that we made the invoice here and we made the invoice that was based on uh based on the bill information so if i was to view and edit so if we go view and edit the invoice that was actually made it looks like this and it was pulled over from the actual items the actual billable items with again that that uh, 30 percent markup at the bottom so i'm going to go back up i'm going to i'm going to close this amount out so note you could do that comparing the invoice and uh and the actual or the invoice and the estimate and the actual costs as you can see here as we're tracking the actual costs we don't see a report at this point in time and hopefully they're going to be providing one at some point which would be an easy comparison report of the actual versus the estimate the estimate versus the actual 
what you can do uh, for, a, for a similar kind of comparison, actual versus estimate, is create budgets. So you could go through the budgeting process, and that would be with the uh, gear up top. And you can then uh, create budgets, budgets, and there are budget versus actual types of reports. So if you were to go into the budgeting process, you can add uh, the budget here and, and go through that process. So I'm not going to uh, go through that in detail, but just note that is an option as well. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.